trust and believe that God is here with us. Amen. This morning I'll be reading from the King James Version, Psalms 24, a song of David. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. He hath founded it upon the sea and established it upon the flood. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord, or who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. He shall receive the blessings from the Lord and the righteousness from the Lord God of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob. Lift up your hands, holy gates, and let, let, let you be lifted up, the everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, even lift them up, the everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. I have read Psalms 24 out of the King James Version in its entirety. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of its holy word. Let us pray. O gracious Father, Lord, we come before you now, humbly as we know how, asking you, Lord God, to search us, Father God. Remove anything that is unlike you, Lord God, so that we may be able to hear clearly your word, Lord. We ask a special blessing upon our pastor who will bring the word this morning, Lord God. Strengthen him on every side, Lord God. Where he feels weak, Lord God, may he trust and know that you are strong, Lord God. Father, we ask a special blessing upon our entire church family, Lord God. Those who are assembled with us both here in the sanctuary as well as virtually, Lord God. Meet them in the midst of their need, Lord. If there's anything that they are in need of, Lord God, we trust that you will give it to them, Lord God. We ask a special blessing upon those who are bereaved, Lord God, those who are ill, Lord God. We ask that you go into the hospital rooms, dear Heavenly Father, and just allow your healing hand, Lord God, to heal any situation, Lord God. Lord, we ask that you will continue to help us to rely on you and know that in you we will find strength, find encouragement, and continue in our faith. Father, we love you and we praise you, and it's in the mighty name of Jesus that we do pray, and the church say amen. Amen. Let's give God a hand clap of praise and MVP for sure.
all in the camp right now, I may have a problem. I'll tell you the truth, I just may have a problem. God saw fit to give me one more opportunity to fix what I could not fix yesterday. And so we're going to praise him and lift him up today. Let's stand here on behalf of uh, the Book Scholarship Fund. As you know, the month of August has five Sundays. And we have designated the fifth Sunday to contribute to uh, the Book Scholarship Fund. So uh, weeks back, I asked you to put it on your calendar. And this is just a reminder, the fifth Sunday of this month, we are going to donate to the Book Scholarship Fund. The Book Scholarship Fund is for anybody. Anybody. Who's in school? If you're 80 and you're in school, you can get a book scholarship. Just all you gotta do is apply. Thank you, my brothers and sisters. Now here we come the pastor. Praise the Lord, everybody. Oh, come on, you can do better than that. Praise the Lord. I think I can keep my mask on until I come back. Can you hear me? Yes, all right, all right. Listen, I want to, uh, I have a few announcements that I want to make mention of. Uh, first announcement I want to announce, I was supposed to announce this last week, and in my haste, I forgot to do it. But it's just as well. On yesterday, we had another member to graduate from college. Amen. Somebody say amen. Alexis Washington graduated with a Bachelor of Science degree on yesterday from Indiana Wesleyan University. And he was talking about scholarships. See, she qualified to, to apply for a book scholarships while she was in school. Amen. Amen. Next week is Women's Day. Speaker coming from Detroit, uh, Reverend Goodner's daughter, Tabitha Goodner. She's going to be our, our speaker. Let's keep in prayer. Sister uh, Kendricks, Sister Marcella, her grandson Austin, known as AK, was uh, track, was in an accident, tragic accident, and the services will be. Wednesday, August the 18th, which is this Wednesday, at Grace Apostolic Church. The viewing is at 10, with the service starting at 12. Let's keep that entire family in prayer. Right. And not only that, but our very own Darlene Wilson has gone home to be with the Lord. Her services will be here on Saturday from 10 to 12. To 12 with the service starting at 12. She was such a supportive member of our church. Although quiet, she was very supportive. And we want to continue to pray for, uh, for that family as well. And she is, a, as I said, a member of our congregation. We want to serve, certainly do what we're supposed to do as a church for that family. And uh, I was telling uh, someone that on Wednesday I left here and went to the uh, Walmart on Michigan Road, stop by to get me some bananas. And I was checking out. I had checked out and started to walk out, and I heard pop, pop, pop. In the parking lot, there was a gentleman sitting in the truck, and he was shot twice in the head. Listen, we talked about last week about we need to pray, yes. yes. But we have got to go and do something about these guns. I don't know how the solution is, but we've got, to, we've got to do state legislators, local legislators, we've got to do something about these guns. Now, I am a gun owner. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But listen, first of all, you need to be trained in what you're doing when you got a gun. But to just take somebody's life, just, just, just take it with no effort, it's just, it's just mind-boggling. We are living in some terrible times. But I will declare that God is still in control. My heart bleeds, my heart is heavy, but I know that He's still in control. And we can depend on 
from him. That's why we need to pray for, for protection. We need to pray for that he would send his angels to be around us because there's so much going on in this world today. Thank God we know him. Thank you so much. For the, uh, remember these announcements and we will be back after this choir comes.
wait until the change come. Amen. Amen. I, I, uh, I, I need your prayers this morning. I don't know why. Some, some mornings that when you've got to speak, it comes a little bit difficult. You can't get your thoughts together. And then the Lord's giving you some more stuff and you're trying to figure out how to make that tie in. So pray with me this morning as we give you the message that he has given me. If you have the Bibles, turn to Genesis. The chapter is 22. And uh, we're going to start reading at the fourth verse. Very familiar passage of scripture. While you're turning, let me pray, Father. Take these lips of clay. Take the reins of my mind. You can in me. Let your Holy Spirit direct and guide as we stand before your people. Lord, we feel our insufficiency. We are leaning and depending on you. That sinners might come to know you. Your name would be glorified and your people edified. We ask these things now in the name of Christ Jesus. Amen. Let the church say amen. amen. Genesis 22, beginning at verse 4, reading from the New King James Version, it says this. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted his eyes and saw the place fall. And Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey. The lad and I will go yonder and worship, and we will come back. So Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son, and took the fire and the knife, and the two of them went together. But Isaac spoke to Abraham his father and said, My father. And he said, Here I am, my son. Then he said, I see the fire in the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham said, my son, God will provide for himself a, burnt, a lamb for the burnt offering. So the two of them went together. Then they came to the place where God had told him. And Abraham built an altar there and placed the wood in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched out his hand to take the knife to slay his son. But, at, but the angel of the Lord, if it's the angel of the Lord, called him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. So he said, here I am. He said, do not lay your hand on the lad. And do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God. Since you have withheld your son. Your only son from me. The word of God for the people of God. The Sunday school unit for this order. Is highlighting faith. I, I decided that I would take maybe a couple messages and preach on faith. So this morning I want to talk about uh, a steadfast faith to withstand the test of life. Can I say that again? A steadfast faith to withstand the test. I, I said test more than one. Of life because we will have more than one test. What I discovered is that compound words has it has is a powerful tool. It's a powerful tool for communicating that that compound words uh, put two independent thoughts into one grand communication. The compound word highland exemplifies both high. And land. Each has its own definition, but when they are combined, a complete new thought is created. 
The same is true with the word withstand, which has the independent meaning of uh, uh, independent meaning from stand. With means to accompany or be with. Quite where stand means to rise in an upright position. I know many of you in the sanctuary don't understand the meaning of stand. Because when I ask you to stand over half the sanctuary, it's still sitting. So when I say stand, it means to rise up in an upright position. Yet when you combine the two words with stand, it has a totally different meaning. Now, with stand means to hold against and to resist or oppose. So when we say steadfast, as contained in the title, the steadfast faith described in this text do not refer to the traditional meaning fast. Come on, come on. Fast, which, which means uh, we are all familiar with fast. It means get in a hurry, do it quick. It's not the kind of faith you want. You, you, you want some faith that is steadfast. Let me tell you what it means. By steadfast faith, we mean faith that it means instead of. Instead of what we think. Instead of what I want. It's, it means instead of. Let me continue. Of course, we know the definition of steadfast in the Greek connotation. Maybe you don't know it, but I'm going to tell you. Stead means location. Okay, okay, y'all might get this. Fast means fixed place. So when you talk about steadfast faith, you talk about a faith that is fixed and it's not movable. I wish y'all would help me this morning. Y'all looking at me like I don't know what I'm talking about. Can, can, can I give you some examples of steadfast faith, of faith in the life of the Apostle Paul? On his first missionary journey, when he was stoned and left for there, that steadfast faith. When, 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 when we saw him uh, in, in the jail, uh, that steadfast faith. He was in the Roman jail. Listen, when Paul stood before Cream of Agrippa and gave his testimony that could have cost him his life. That's that next faith. When we see the labor that he put down establishing churches and building up churches, that's that fast faith. Something that is fixed yeah. and immovable. You can't move it. Question for us today is this Is your spiritual life unsatisfying? If your spiritual life is not what it ought to be, then you might need to examine yourself because there are some other possibilities that will help you. You may discover that if you try faith, that it will be a part of your life and it will be something that you embrace and that it will be something that will be steadfast in your life and make your life what it ought to be. We'll talk about in this text, things that steadfast faith, steadfast faith. The story of Abraham is a test, a story that is a test, I want y'all to get this, and not a temptation. I said the story of Abraham is a text and not a temptation. So Abraham has a strange beginning uh, 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 and God has a way of doing things in strange ways. And he, he condescended to this heathen family, a family that served out of God's, yet God draws near to some of us in strange ways to reveal himself to us, even though There was nothing about Abraham that deserved his divine notice. 
He came from an adultery family. They served our God. But in spite of that, God in his grace found a reason to approach Abraham. And I want to tell you, God has a reason for approaching you. Listen, therefore the God of glory revealed himself to Abraham. What a strange beginning. He calls a man out of, of, out of an adulterous, out of God situation. And he lifts him from the darkness and, and obscurity of paganism. And he goes and makes him the father of a great nation. Only God can do that. God do some strange things. Can I tell you this? He called Abraham, and if you read it, if you read the Bible, you will know he gave Abraham 48 promises. And he gave him 14 commands. The God who majors in doing strange things made a request of Abraham. When he was 70 years old, he said to him, leave your birthplace. Forsake your home. Sell yourself from the family that you have ties to. The loved ones that, that you know and leave them behind. And he said, I'm going to make you a great nation. That was a test, not a temptation. So he lived by faith. God also tests us. I said he tests us. He puts us under pressure so that we can grow. So don't get angry with God when he's just testing you. He wants you to come into a spiritual maturity. Amen. We come here as immature babes in Christ. And if we, if we are never put under pressure, we won't grow. We won't get on our knees and pray. Oh, I wish I had a witness here. Abraham and Isaac trip to Mount Moriah and, 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 and listen it, it was a planned sacrifice Isaac was Abraham's favorite in life often that which is familiar with you is the things that you take for granted can I give you an example I I, I, I back out of my garage and I hit the little mechanism that lets the garage go down. <laughs> I, let it, I let it down, and, and you know, I've become so familiar with doing it. So it's just what? <laughs> Automatic. I, I back out of my garage, I hit the little mechanism, the garage door comes down. Why is it that I have gone back to my house and my garage door still up? <laughs> because sometimes things that are familiar to us, we take for granted. Understand that we don't all have to take things for granted. God woke you up this morning. Don't take that for granted. He started you on the way. Don't take that for granted. Just every morning when you get up, you ought to first of all give him some praise. Okay, let me go on. Listen, some some of you, some of you uh, remember, and some of you still re don't use any version of the Bible but the way. King James Version. It's not so to that. We use the King James because it's what? Familiar. But I want to tell you this. There are all, there are many other verses that have been drafted to increase our understanding and the message behind the word that is contained, in the, uh, contained therein. Of course, we know scriptures do not change. But can I tell you that language has changed radically over the years? And, and, and we need to make sure that we are, we are keeping up with God's word, even if we have to go to versions that's not King James, because we're just so familiar with the King James. Here's an excellent example in the text. The King James version said, God tempted Abraham. This can be both clear and confusing depending on the meaning you apply to tempt. Can I tell you this? In the court of 
King James in 1611. Shakespeare was in his prime in England, and, and they spoke this beautiful language called Elizabethan English. And during that time, Kemp made tests. I said they spoke this beautiful English language, but in that time, Kemp meant tests. It does not mean that today, Tim has an evil uh, definition. It has a bad connotation. It means to trick. It means to mislead. It means to deceive. But let me tell you this. I stopped out this morning on my way to heaven to let somebody know that God does not trick you. God does not mislead you. God does not deceive you. He's not into tricking us. He's not in the business of deceiving us. James said it best. He said, let no man say when he is tempted that say that he's tempted of God. For God cannot tempt with evil, neither tempts he any man. So we have to remember that that word tempt means test in the text. When we know God is not against us, when we know that he's on our side, when we he know we know that he is not willing for any to perish. When God spoke to Abraham and told him to go make the sacrifice to his only son, it was not a temptation. It was a test. So if you wonder what kind of test it was, it was a faith test. Not a temptation. The test, however, was one of the biggest tests Abraham would ever face in his life. It was bigger than his early text when God told him to leave the, the land of Ur and the Chaldean and search for a city whose builder and maker was God. Abraham, going and coming, had been in the shadow of the covenant, and the covenant was that God was going to make him a great nation. And so Abraham was sorry. God told him that his descendants would be like the sands of the sea. You remember Sarah was having difficulties giving birth to a son. And she had advanced in age. So Sarah convinced Abraham to take a maid servant and have a son. And he did that, but it wasn't what God had promised. I said he did it, but it wasn't what God had promised. And at the age of 100, the covenant was fulfilled. And I was born. Isaac now becomes the foundation to this great test. It was not a temptation. It was a test. Yes, sir. Did God believe it? Did Abraham believe in God's promise to be able to fulfill it? Would Abraham eliminate the one person that would allow him to be have his ancestors? From generation to generation, would Abraham believe what God had told him to do? Do you really believe? Can I tell you this? Testing comes down to really believing that God will do what he said. And the question becomes, do you really believe in God? So, so it was it was a, it was a test, not a temptation. Secondly, it shows us. When Abraham obeyed, uh, it was a faith by faith and not fear. Okay. Abraham could obey God and pass the test because he had faith that God was on his side. There's a popular idea it has been put forward by authorities and how we relate to becoming uh, 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 to becoming uh, a person that will adhere to authority figures. Researchers have found out that when fathers, get this, when fathers, even in their discipline of their children, when they do it in love, it dispenses a kind of acceptance of authority. 
Let me say it again. When fathers, even when they are disciplining their children, when they do it in love, it gives that child a positive idea of accepting authority. If you don't do it, it's just opposite, then up it goes the other way. You don't respect authority. One of the reasons I believe we have so much going on in our young men today is they don't have any father figures to show them what a father ought to be so they don't respect any authority. Abraham rose early. Abraham doing it. 
without any reservation. How could he obey so easily? The answer is based on Abraham's now relationship with God. His past experiences have proven to him that God was on his side. When he left the earth, the Chaldeans, when he allowed God to choose the land, the back of the land in the valley, and he took the woods, God was on his side, y'all. This is a great lesson for us. We need to understand that God is on our side. Do you know the Lord is on your side? I said, do you know that the Lord is on your side? The Lord will be God. The more we discover how wonderful his choices are and can be in our lives often does not appear to be that way on the surface. But I like what the Apostle Paul said in Romans 8, 28. That's one of my favorite scriptures. All things work together for good to them that love the Lord. I, I, I got to hurry. I, I got one more thing to tell you. The third thing is when the ram was substituted for Isaac, it was a promise that faith would be rewarded, not punished. I said it was a promise that it would be rewarded and not a punishment. Abraham left and I told you he journeyed for three days. He spotted Mount Moriah. He instructed his servants to remain behind while he and Isaac went and performed the sacrifice. Abraham said in verse 22, Abide here when they ask and my son and I will go yonder and guess what he said? And come back again. I told you earlier, Abraham had never seen a sacrifice get up. I wish I had a witness here. But here he is. Saying me and my son is going to go and come back again. Well, the author of the Hebrews in, in the 11th chapter said, By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, me when he was tested, offered up Isaac. Meaning that God perhaps would raise him up. No, Abraham was not lying. He was trusting. He was believing. He was not doing anything that was, was evil. He was trusting God. That he would be a provider and a director like he had been in his life. No, no one really knows exactly how Isaac responded as his father prepared to sacrifice him. He'd already said, Father, I see the fire. I see the wood. But where is the lamb? Abraham simply responded, uh, God will provide. Abraham's words were prophetic. Upon Mount Moriah, I can see him building the altar, putting the wood in place, and then taking his son and binding him on the altar. Then he takes the knife and gets ready to slay his son so that the blood would flow on the altar. Then he would build a fire to burn up his son. I tell you, Abraham's word was prophetic. He said, the Lord will provide a man. And just as Abraham drew the knife back, he heard the angel of the Lord say, lay not your hand upon the land. Uh, I see now that you fear God. And that fear is not the fear that we talk about fearing. It talks about I respect God. Do I have a witness here? It was then that Abraham noticed in the thickest by a ram was caught in the thicket. Now scholars tell us that uh, they believe that Isaac had taken the number one spot in his heart and so God had to get his spot back. Can I get a Child. And after Isaac was born, uh, 
immobile, steadfast faith is a faith that will stand the test of life. And I need to tell you, do I have a witness here? Trials are never convenient. They are always inconvenient. Trials are never timely. They are always untimely. Trials are, are never comfortable. They are always uncomfortable. The purpose of trials is to teach us to be patient. It is to teach us to have priorities. And if you're going to have steadfast faith,
How great is our God. James, the great late James Cleveland had a song that asked the question, where is your faith? Where is your faith? It's prayer time. On our prayer list today, we have Sister Harlison, mother of Talisha Crenshaw, the family of Sister Darlene Wilson, Sister Martha Anthony, Sister Pam Benson, Sister Jean Lewis, Sister Lorraine Freeman, Sister Sharon Felder, Sister Diane Shopshire, Brother George Poole, Anaya Butler, Sister Marcella Kendrick and the death of her grandson. As we come to the Lord in prayer, we want to remember those who are not on the prayer list, those who may be in the hospital beds or incarcerated, and those who are away in school. Amen. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Lord, we come to you this morning standing in the need of prayer. There are a few who have gathered here today, dear Father, bringing their petitions to you. Lord, as we look around, dear Father, we see the evidence that you are still in control. We may be facing some calamities, the earthquake in Hades, the fires on the West Coast, but Lord, we know that you are God who knows all. So Lord, we Stretch our hands to thee, dear Father, to ask you to give us comfort today, dear Father, that you will reign on all the earth. So, Lord, we want to thank you for last night's lying down and this morning's only rising. Lord, we thank you that we were in our right minds and we had all use of our extremities. Lord, we had clothes to put on our bodies, dear Father. Dear Father, we had cars to drive to the worship service this morning. Lord, we have jobs to go to. So Lord, we just want to thank you in spite of all the things that we see that you are still God and God all by yourself. Lord, we ask you to bless those, dear Father, who do not have a place to lay their head. Bless those who, who do not have jobs to go to. Touch their hearts, dear Father. Let them know that you are God and God all by yourself. Lord, you said in your word you have never seen the righteous forsaken. So, Lord, we just come to you right now, dear Father, to watch over those, dear Father, who, who do not know your name and part in sin, that, that question that if there is a God. But, Lord, we see the evidence all around us, dear Father. Let them see the things that, that you are creating, the things that you are in control of. Dear Father, let our lights shine, dear Father, and others, dear Father, that, that they will be able to see Christ in us. So, Lord, I ask you to bless this church that stands on this corner, dear Father. Bless the, the leadership of this church, dear Father, that we will be able to carry out your command, dear Father. That we will be able to go out, dear Father, and spread your word to others. Lord, I ask you to bless our pastor, dear Father, who, who uh, is the leader of this congregation, dear Father. Crown his head with knowledge, dear Father, that he will be able to lead us, dear Father, in the direction that you have guided him to lead us. Dear Father, that we will be able to touch someone today, dear Father, that might come crying. What must I do to be saved? So, Lord, we just ask you to continue to, to be a shelter, dear Father, in a time of storm, dear Father. To breathe and be that bridge over troubled waters, dear Father. Dear Father, be that, that lawyer in the courtroom, dear Father, that doctor in the sick room. So, Lord, we just ask you right now in the powerful name of Jesus, dear Father, that we'll be able to stand firm on your word. Dear Father, just, just be with us today, dear Father, as we, dear Father, leave this place, dear Father, that we will be able to carry out your command and go ye therefore to tell someone about Jesus. Now, Lord, we just want to bless this offering that will be taken up today, dear Father, and will be used to glorify your kingdom. And then, Lord, we ask you to bless us as we leave this place, dear 
there, Father, but never from thy presence. In the powerful name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.